Congressman Johnson, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to do, as, as Tony mentioned, quick introduction. Uh, Congressman Johnson really needs no introduction here in Georgia. He's in his eighth term in the U.S. House of Representatives from Georgia's fourth congressional district, which includes my house uh, in Dunwoody, and uh, encompasses parts of DeKalb County, uh, Gwinnett County, Newton Counties, and all of Rockdale County. Uh, he is a senior member of the House Judiciary Committee, committee um, and has introduced and co-sponsored and passed legislation aimed at leveling the play, playing field for uh, everyday Americans, including the FAIR Act and the Stop Militarizing Law Enforcement Act, um, which was passed in the, uh, the aftermath of uh, George Floyd's mur murder. Um, he is, has been a champion for digital inclusion and an open internet, and on in January 2021, uh, Congressman Johnson was named uh, as a member of the House Committee on, on Oversight and Reform, the main investigative. Is that good? Is that old news? <laughs> old news. All right, cool. Well, I think what he's going to talk about today is his passion for the immigrant and refugee community here in Metro Atlanta and Georgia. And we'll leave it there. All right, sounds good. Congressman Johnson. Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be with you. I'm Hank Johnson, Georgia's 4th Congressional District. Uh, this is my ninth term now. It's hard for me to grasp that. It's been 16 years. This is my 17th year. Uh, at the end of this term, it'll be 18 years in Congress. I cannot believe it, the way time has just flown. And uh, those of you who are who are uh, you know, maturing, or getting older in other words, <laughs> you'll probably go through what I've been through, which is time seems to speed up every decade. Every decade seems to get shorter and shorter. Uh, it used to be 10 years felt like 20 years, but now 10 years feels like two years. But um, I'll tell you, during that time, during that 16 years in Congress, I've had the opportunity to be able to travel uh, I was, uh, my first 10 years in Congress was on the House Armed Services Committee, and that allowed me the opportunity to uh, do a lot of traveling. Probably went to about 39 or 40 different countries across the world. I would contrast that, not for egotistical purposes, but just for your general information. I would uh, let you know that um, only that uh, 40 percent of the members of Congress don't hold passports, 40%. And, um, but I've taken the opportunity not to build myself up, but just to show that there are many in Congress, including myself, who uh, take a uh, international or a global view of things. And uh, that's been manifested in, in my life by the travel that I've done. And, um, in search of new experiences and learning about other cultures and languages and other ways of thinking. And I also get to expand my knowledge of the diversity of people from other continents that make our planet such a special place. And in some ways, I've been fortunate enough to create my own little global study center by exploring other nations, lands, and cultures, and all the while absorbing themes of identity, language, discrimination, diversity, injustice, hope, and community. I've been so fortunate to also represent such an incredibly diverse district, the fourth district here in Georgia, that many of the things that I experience and explore abroad, I can experience right here at home in places like Clarkston, which has been called the Ellis Island of the South, which is in the heart of the 4th Congressional District. And that's why I'm pleased to share some thoughts with you today during Global at Home, showcased as part of your Global Studies Symposium. And, uh, but I do think it's uh, appropriate for me to congratulate each and every one of you, um, because it looks like we have all made it through the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Give yourselves a hand. <laughs> and COVID-19 was not, certainly it was not the first pandemic, 
not the first global pandemic. And, uh, but it, it has been the most consequential global pandemic, global pandemic during my lifetime. And it has been also a graphic example of how interconnected people are across the world. COVID-19 won't be our last global pandemic, and it's certainly possible that future pandemics may be more sickening and more deadly. And it will certainly take global efforts to deal with whatever pandemics emerge in the future. But even as we have common agreement that the people of the world are indeed interconnected, we are a long way from the people of the world coming to the common realization that we are also interdependent. Here in America, it's been a notion of American, it's been the notion of American exceptionalism that has been ingrained in our collective psyche. And that is that we, Americans, lead and everyone else follows. And it's our way or the highway. And American exceptionalism yielded to America first and the rest of the world be damned. As our nation edges away from that unenlightened policy, the United States government under President Joseph Biden has concluded that climate change is emerging as a foundational threat to national security. As ice melts in the Arctic Ocean, competition will increase for fish minerals, and other resources. Reports warn us that tens of millions of people are likely to be displaced by 2050. Tens of millions of people displaced by 2050 due to global warming, including as many as 143 million people in South Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, and Latin America, oh my goodness, all of these black and brown people may be coming to America, hordes. It's frightening. So if you think that we uh, have out of control immigration and you wanna build a wall to stop what is on the horizon you perhaps ain't seen nothing yet. As the U.S. struggles to establish a vibrant economy fueled by the growth in clean and renewable energy production and use, legacy nations with economies dependent on oil production like Russia, Saudi Arabia, China, Iran, Iraq, Brazil, Libya, Algeria, Nigeria, and others as demand for oil dries up, and the sooner the better that that happens, those countries will be hit by lost revenue from fossil fuels even as their regions face worsening heat and drought. The Pentagon has warned that food shortages could lead to unrest along with fights between countries over water. So we can see the prospects for conflicts and military tensions between nations to be increasing. And we can foresee increased dislocation and migration as people flee climate-fueled instability. This is a global challenge that stands for the proposition so artfully stated by my dearly departed colleague, Congressman John Lewis, who said, quote, we may have come to America on different ships, but we are in the same boat now, end quote. For purposes of this conference and our discussion, I'd like to extend that quote. I'd like to say that Mother Earth is the ship on which mankind sails, no matter what country we call home. And we are in a global fight for survivability 
of mothership earth in addition to climate change the threat of nuclear war looms like a giant mushroom crowd over mothership earth all it would take would be for the no first use policy and the doctrine of mutually assured destruction to fail either by mistake or intentionally by a madman like Putin with one nation firing a nuclear weapon towards another which would cause the targeted nation to respond in kind the result would be a nuclear Armageddon with the immediate deaths of hundreds of millions of people due to the blast a giant mushroom cloud of radioactive soot or soot would envelop the mothership shutting out sunlight and the ability of crops to grow global sickness and family and excuse me global sickness and famine would plague survivors humanity could even be wiped out this is the somber reality that we must face and I have abundant hope and eternal optimism and confidence that mankind is rising to the challenge the Atlanta Global Studies Center plays an important role in getting at our global challenges by thinking globally and acting locally cultivating a dynamic culture of cooperation through its extensive partner network and initiatives please call upon me to assist you in your very important efforts and I will leave you with this this quote from Daisaku Ikeda from his novel the human revolution quote a great revolution of character in just a single individual will help achieve a challenge in the destiny of a nation and further will cause a change in the destiny of mankind end quote so even though the challenges are large and seemingly uh, insurmountable uh, just one person uh, with the will and the spirit to make a positive difference can have a tremendous impact on the future of the world and that person is you and each one of us collectively uh, moving forward uh, we will uh, overcome thank you ladies and gentlemen